how to get your file edits faster, protect your privacy, and get images right in killer code, all of that, and a little bit more in the new release of what's new in killer code. If you work with user interfaces like the frontend, you will totally love this one. Now you can generate images for your applications right in Visual Studio Code without leaving killer code. That's a wonderful feature and I really want to show you how to use it because I'm going to be using it all the time. You know, I'm more into backend and DevOps side of things and not into frontend. But I want my applications to be looking good looking too. So now with image generation, it just got so much better. I don't need to search. I don't need to do something else. It's just natively integrated in the process. Take a look. Let's say I want to replace this letter icon, what looks like that, with picture. So it would just look better, some prettier icon. Let's enable this experimental thing. So we go into settings. Experimental, my most favorite tab. Scroll down there and enable AI image generation. Now you need to push here to get your current API key uh, for killer code, so it will be available for image generation. Push the save button, push done, and that's it, it's enabled. Behind the scenes, there is a new tool has been injected in the system prompt. So now your models, any model you are using, will be able to generate images for you using Gemini 2.5 flash image generation. So I can throw here something like create an icon, picture 5050 of ABC letters like an alphabet and replace letter icon uh, with this picture. So I want to modify my layout, let's say. Yes, here. Now Sunnet will be thinking uh, reading files uh, and very soon I need to create a picture. So it creates a to-do list first, not to miss anything important. And now it goes for an image. Killer Code wants to generate an image. That's a tool use, which will go to uh, this Gemini Flash 2.5 uh, for images and create a, well, good-looking icon, which is already stored in the project for me. So as you see, it's already in change set and I can open it and I can use it. And look, it just worked. It's there. That's a good job. I created a file and it was very quick and very nice and didn't make me using paintbrush or whatever torture tools we're having here in 21st century. Now, this feature is my favorite. I use it all the time. It's really improved my workflow. What is it about? I believe you encountered, well, sadly everyone did, problems with file edits. Then module decides to edit your files. Then those changes are failed to be applied because tool was using used incorrectly. Then module tries to fix this mistake, does, does something wrong again. So that can circle back a few times. Very unpleasant and disturbing. Less capable models tend to do it more often, more powerful models less often, but still it happens nearly with every model, at least with me. Enters Morph. What is Morph? Uh, Morph is a specially trained model, which has only one purpose and it does it good. Morph is a specially trained model to edit files. So next time, if you enable this feature, then your AI model will decide to update something in your files. This change set can be applied not with normal file edit tool, but with morph edit tool. Then this injection will be done by morph. And my personal experience show it goes very fast and very reliable with nearly zero failure rate. It costs a little bit more money because calling morph uh, is an API call which consumes some tokens, but you save so much more on just not trying to fix this edit again and again. So if you, like me, uh, also encounter these file edit mistakes, you will love it and you totally want to try it. So let's take a look how do you enable that. Using Morph is super simple. 
one of the reasons I like it that much. So, to enable it, we just go to Settings, Experimental, and push the button Enable More Fast Apply. And basically that's it. If you have your own private subscription to Morph, then you can put here your Morph API key, but if you don't, don't worry, it will still work through Killer Code API. After that, that's it, you save, you are done here, and then any file change happening will happen not with standard tool editing, but with more, more fast apply. Yes, it puts some tokens into play and goes to MorphLM, but Still, it works much more reliable, so to me it saves a lot of tokens in the final end. And most of all, it saves me from frustration on all those unsuccessful edits. So, you think what Gila Code is an extension for Visual Studio Code, right? What if I tell you you are wrong? <laughs> no, but in some kind, yes, you are because now killer code goes outside of this Visual Studio Code box. There is a very experimental, very alpha build for JetBrains products of killer code. So you can try to use killer code inside JetBrains if you prefer JetBrains Rider or some other tools of this studio. You might be very interested in it. That is an alpha release. So you might expect to encounter some issues, but be desperately looking for testers. So if you try and if something goes good or something goes not that good, please let us know. At the moment, plugin is not yet officially available on JetBrain Marketplace. So if you want to join this early test, then jump on into our Discord server and join Alpha JetBrains channel and Alpha JetBrains feedback channel. Those are where we centralize all the communication and feedback about the JetBrains version. We take your privacy very seriously. And the other features would help you to, to protect it all the time. Now there is a new one. Now you can opt out of uh, using models what collect user data, prompts, code samples you know, to later train on them. Take a look. Many models, uh, especially in the their free phase while we are learning in the beta testing, alpha testing before they will be released commercially, can be available for free. But meanwhile, we collect your prompts and they collect your feedback, they collect the code you are working on, then later to be trained on. Maybe for you it's fine, maybe you work on an open source project and don't care that much. But we highly respect uh, idea to protect your privacy. So now you can opt out of using of such models and I want you to know how to do it. Take a look. I have here Grok Code Fast 1, uh, configured via Killer Code API provider. And if we ask it, do you collect my prompts? It will answer, um, no, 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 I do not collect or store your prompts. Um, that's a model, model doesn't collect. But the API that serves it can. Uh, so, how do we protect ourselves from that? If I go to settings, providers, killer code, you see here I have model XAA grow code fast. Here on the downstairs in the provider routing, I have no data policy set. Now I switch to deny provider data collection and save. What will happen now if I ask the model with the same question? Oh, look, API request failed. Data collection is required for this model. So that's how you prevent yourself from getting into working with models what collects your prompts and data, if that's what you want. If you heard those claps far away, that must have been Killer Code team opening champagne. There is a huge reason to celebrate. One of the biggest innovations features what so many people expected is finally released from the experimental cage. So I'm talking of course of a killer code autocomplete which's been in experimental state for many months 
and a big team of people have been working day and night to deliver it to be more reliable, very predictable and convenient to use. So now we believe it's finally done. Many months of experiments, many, 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 many tons of your feedback and it's here for you to use. I will show you how it works in a separate video, but like very brief overview right now. Don't look for autocomplete in experimental settings, it's not there anymore. So now we decided it deserves its own tab. So if you go to settings and click here, you will get a dedicated autocomplete uh, tab. Well, deserve it. So what we can do here first, you, uh, you can enable autocomplete working automatically. Then while you're typing and then doing a stop as specified in auto trigger delay, uh, killer code will proceed typing for you. Mm. I prefer just to stop and think a little bit from time to time, so I prefer to do the same, but uh, as a manual autocomplete. So now instead of just making a pause and waiting, I can begin doing something like that. And then I push a hotkey, command L for manual invocation of the autocomplete, and it proceeds considering all the uh, context, all the surrounding. So here, for example, I have initiated the launch of a speech and then autocomplete decides what time come to stop it. So the more advanced uh, context here you have, better will be suggestions. And then finally, there is a quick task option. So you can, for example, go around the text and push command I and then just quickly describe what you want to have here. Art error handling. And now we can scroll through the options. Now we can scroll through different uh, suggestions, uh, exceptions, and try catches. Well, depending on what will be the task you will be giving. So that's a very good time to explore this option. And don't forget, you can switch to custom provider if you prefer something smarter but less fast or maybe faster but less smart. Using AI is always about balance, fast, smart and, well, <laughs> more expensive. What do you think about that? Do you like those features? Are you going to use it? I can't wait for your feedback in the YouTube comments or better on our wonderful Discord server where are so many people. We only miss you. Thank you for watching. And see you in the next video.